We are in the middle of the pandemic. The crisis continues to linger on, but one organization here locally is taking people that were once homeless and giving them hope. With us now is Lisa Crawford. She's the communications manager for Humble Design. Great to have you with us. It's great to be here, Ronnie. Thank you. For those not familiar with Humble Design, tell us about the organization. Well, it started here in Detroit in 2009. So our founder had um, moved here from Miami and was volunteering at a local food bank and made friends with someone who she learned was homeless after leaving a domestic violence situation. She'd never met anybody that was homeless before and it was weighed heavily on her. And she was so excited for her friend when she got a place to stay with her and her kids um, and didn't realize that of course she didn't have any furniture. So it was a completely empty apartment. And when she went to visit and saw that they were sleeping in little nests of blankets on the floor, she asked all of her friends to donate their extra furniture, their extra stuff. And in a, in a week or two, they had enough to completely furnish her apartment, but people kept donating stuff to her. <laughs> so they started calling her the furniture lady because people were just dropping stuff off in her driveway. Um, she called around, tried to offer it to all nine different agencies. And they were like, we don't have anywhere to store it. So this is a real hole in the system here. And her husband said, hey, I think you've got a nonprofit idea on your hands here. And it was born and they started doing one house a month and it grew till in 2016, we were decorating and furnishing three houses a week here in the Metro Detroit area. And then we've expanded to four other cities. Uh, so where now, are you still in Pontiac? Cause I know your shirt says Detroit. Yeah. Well, 85% of our clients that we serve live in Detroit, but we have this warehouse in Pontiac because we take donations. So to facilitate people dropping off donations of decor items, plates, glasses, artwork, we needed to have a more centralized location so that people wouldn't have to drive 45 minutes to donate. So I will say I my kitchen table uh, came from uh, your place, Humble Designs in Pontiac. I was there a few years ago. I think we were working with you guys when I was with uh, Channel 7, trying oh, to get cool. furniture for uh, the Detroit firefighters and e, um, EMS medics. And uh, while we were in there, I didn't realize you guys also had like a, a resale shop per se. I don't know if you're still doing that, but it was like a new table. I was like, oh, I want that. <laughs> Are you still having a resale shop as well? It's not on an on like a full-time basis, but we don't really have a, a good way to control the flow of donations. And so sometimes even um, different manufacturers will donate things to us that are perhaps a table that's way too large for most of our families. It would never fit in their home or apartment. So what do we do with that? So we try to find some way to generate money from that so that we can then help more people with that. Um, so every now and then we'll have a warehouse sale. Um, we had a resale auction twice upon a time a couple of weeks ago, and we think we're gonna do that a couple times a year. It's an online auction where our designers repurpose some furniture and then we had it for auction on a little site, so. That's awesome. So let's talk about the fundraising right now. Where do things stand? Because this is a hard year and so many nonprofits that would normally have some of these big fundraising events were not able to do that because of the COVID-19 crisis. It has been super challenging. So we typically have had a really large event in the fall called Gigs for Digs. And it was at the Fillmore. And then a couple of years ago, we had it at the Opera House and we partnered with Mitch Album for the launching of his book, Finding Chica. And, um, you know, that typically brought in over $100,000 for us and we could not do that. So we pivoted to some online events. We had a virtual 5K and the Red Wings Darren Helm helped us promote that. Um, and we are, are looking to, we had Top Golf, which we were able to have in person in October, and we have another Top Golf event in March, which is amazing because they give us a deal as a nonprofit. 
So you can get more for three hours of Top Golf at $100 a ticket with us than you could if you went there by yourself. So it's partnerships like that, working with other places that want to help us. But we are looking to do an event this fall called Welcome Home, maybe at Eastern Market, somewhere out in the open where we can set up vignette spaces for people, but um, mitigate too much mixing. We just don't know. We don't know what it's going to look like in the fall. So it makes planning very challenging. Right? <laughs> You're like, and these events are hard to plan. There's a lot that goes into them. And then you could do all this planning. And then, you know, two weeks, or even a week earlier, uh, the state should, could go into a shutdown and, and it, it gets it canceled. Double the planning because you have to have your online backup. Okay, if they shut us down at the last minute, what are we going to do? Uh, so with that, um, how's the need been during the pandemic for your services, though? It, it has been astonishing. So in the first wave of the pandemic from March through April, it was so overwhelming that the all of the partnering agencies, we partner with 19 different agencies here in Detroit, in this area, uh, were just deluged with people. And then they had to set up satellite spaces for people to stay. If someone tested positive, they had to go into a separate, you know, but they weren't ready to be hospitalized or needed to be hospitalized. So we shifted to helping the helpers for a few months where we just took, we emptied our warehouse of almost all of our sheets, blankets, small appliances, coffee makers, that kind of stuff, towels that they needed in the shelters. And then in June, we were able to go back to doing in-home so with the um, shutting down of evictions where they were not allowed to evict people, it put a weird hiccup into the system because then everybody who was in the shelter who needed a place, there weren't available housing for them. So we just did a woman two weeks ago, Kenyatta, who had moved up here from the South in January. She had two jobs lined up. This was a year ago, January. She was staying with her aunt and her th with her three kids. She was saving up money to get a place. And then March, COVID, both of her jobs went away. So then they told her at her aunt's apartment that she couldn't stay there any longer or her aunt would not be, there were too many people in the apartment. So she took the money she'd saved and moved into a motel, a one bedroom motel, and was spending all of her money on that. And then someone told her about the lighthouse in Pontiac and she contacted them and they said, we'll let you stay at this motel. We've got a fund. We can't have you with COVID in the shelter. So this was in July that that happened, that she moved into there. And it took her until two weeks ago to get a place, to find a place to live. Wow. And, and that's one side of this um, issue. It, we really haven't heard a lot about. People are unable to find housing right now. And as she said to me, it isn't that I want anybody to be evicted. And I feel so bad that these people are in such a place. I wouldn't want anybody to be put out on the street and have to go into a shelter. But there's just been nothing available. Lisa Crawford with us here on the Megacast. She's the communications manager for Humble Design. So where are you on your donation level right now? Because a lot of people are stuck at home now. So they're going through their stuff. They call it the clutter chaos. They're yeah. clearing things out, but they're also finding ways to sell it that maybe before wasn't available to them. Like where they would donate before, maybe they are just selling it because you could do marketplace or let it go, throw it out on your porch and not come in contact with someone. We, we have had such a flood of donations. So it, it has been managing that. Normally, prior to the pandemic, people could just drop off Monday through Friday, nine to five. But with the pandemic flow, we just did not have the warehouse space. We were being literally overwhelmed, drowned in it. So we had to start scheduling drop offs and having people tell us what they were gonna bring so that we could decide whether or not we needed it. Sometimes we go through a bunch of dressers and we don't have any dressers. Sometimes we have, oh, we got 20 dressers, we've got no desks. Right now, kids' desks with all the kids that had to uh, learn at home. 
Um, it was a huge, like they were sitting on the floor doing their homework on boxes. So getting desks into houses was just as important as getting beds to get them up off the floor. So what is the best way for people to help you? Um, it, it's, it feels... We crap. see your coworker there. Oh. <laughs> it was, uh, I tried locking him in a room. He's very clever. Um, <laughs> no, that's okay. You'll probably hear my dog bark at some point in time. <laughs> um, so it sounds insensitive in a way to say money because so many people are struggling, but this has almost moved me to tears. We've had several people who, when they got their $600 stimulus, forwarded it on to us and said, I don't need this right now. I haven't had any interruption in my workflow please use this money to help more people. So we have seen in some respects an uptick in giving and those who you know, can't, um, we've had people go on our Target wish list, our Amazon wish list. We really try to put books and toys, dolls that are representative. 91% uh, of the people that we serve here are black and we feel as if representation matters. So they purchase books from Target or Amazon and dolls of color and send them to our warehouse. So we had several people that like, you know, I can't afford to give a lot of money, but I can afford two black Barbie dolls or um, it, it's been incredibly supportive and the outpouring of um, that support has meant so much to us when so many nonprofits have had to close their doors. And that's what's heartbreaking is to think um, we hear so much about, uh, you know, restaurants and small businesses, but a lot of focus has not been on some of the nonprofits that are struggling as well during this pandemic. Have you been able to take advantage of some of the grants that have been available to nonprofits? So we did apply for the PPP and we qualified for that and we got that. I believe it was in June. So we had... Um, we normally have six part-time designers. Um, we had two of our designers that left for other reasons, and we just maintained four to try to trim back costs. I was the director of Humble Design Detroit at that time, and we were really struggling financially. So I transitioned to the communications role nationally to alleviate Detroit from having to pay that. But two weeks ago, Detroit hired a new director, Chris Tall, and we are super excited to have him on board as things are building back up and we're able to be um, get back to three homes. We had reduced in November, we went to two homes a week. We just could not afford to do three, but we are mm -hmm. back up to three homes a week right now and we're excited about that. So I know that you've been able to furnish uh, over 1,500 homes now since 2009 for these families. That is life changing for them. So, but what has it been like for members of your staff to have to go into homes during COVID? We have put some safety precautions in place. So after doing a lot of research um, that a lot of uh, COVID isn't passed through surface transmission. Mm -hmm. So that allowed us to feel more at ease going back into the home because we did find out after we had done someone's home that they had tested positive for COVID, but we limit it to one person a room in putting the room together. We have the windows open to create airflow in there. Um, and we try to be in and out in, you know, two hours with our makeover. So we've put things in place and we have seen, you know, there's a lot of volunteers that just aren't comfortable right now until after they get vaccinated, and that's okay too. And so with that, uh, do you need volunteers right now? We always need volunteers. And what we are really needing volunteers for is sorting in our warehouse. So that huge volume of stuff that comes in needs to be sorted and put in place throughout the warehouse so the designers can then shop for the clients when it's time to decorate their home. So I think about this, I, um, there was a tornado that went through Southern Indiana, you know, probably like seven, eight years ago. And my girlfriend and I went down to volunteer and just the sheer volume of donations, people were driving through and dropping off. 
And it was like you said, trying to actually separate that. And a lot of it was clothing as well. So you had to go, you know, sizing and what was valued and what was needed and this, that, and that. It was overwhelming. So I could imagine in your situation as well, people feel like they're helping, but sometimes if you're getting donations that aren't the right donations, it can really kind of hinder from your mission. So we have a little cheat sheet on the website to let people know what we are looking for. And then on social media, every Wednesday, we do a Wednesday wish list, the things we're short of, so that people can, you know, and, and it isn't that we don't want those other items that you have, if you have we, someplace in your basement or garage, you can keep it for a few months. Like two weeks from now, that item in your garage could be on our wish list. It's just very hard to manage the flow of inventory. So what is on the top of your need list right now? Twin beds and box springs um, and queen. So we had a home of a single woman um, last week and she was hoping to get a queen size bed. And I went back to the warehouse and I was talking with the operations manager and she said, you know, we only have 12 queen box springs and mattresses right now. I know it's just a one bedroom apartment. How big is her bedroom? I said, it's really big. It's almost as big as her living room. She said, could she take a king? Because we don't normally take king donations of beds and box springs. But she said, we have four right now. And if we could get rid of one of those, because a lot of our families live in bungalows and the moms are often upstairs and we can't even get a queen box spring up those stairs. So we need a full. So there's always this juggling, but beds are always a high priority. Um, And we work super hard. We did get a a small grant from um, 100 Women Who Care in Troy of almost $4,000 to buy beds. And if if we were ever out, that we could do that. So we've got a little cash that we can do that for if we need to, but that's a challenge. Yeah, and I wonder too, because I know uh, when we were doing the furniture drive for um, Detroit Fire and EMS, we were so lucky to be able to have uh, various organizations. Gardner White was amazing. They matched our donation. They continue to donate uh, to a fire EMS. But it's like you said, it's the beds and like recliners, things of that nature. But now we're seeing these furniture stores like Art Van was a huge contributor and supporter of so many nonprofits here in the Metro Detroit area. What's that been like? Has that impacted your organization? Definitely impacted us. And um, we had gotten a large donation from our van like three weeks before they announced that they were closing their doors. And it was, it was, you know, it's always like this huge relief when we get a big donation like that from um floyd in detroit has donated a lot of furniture to us which has been wonderful because uh there are modular pieces that are easy to get up and down stairs um but it it is always challenging but we appreciate so much i saw that you know love had moved in where art van and then i saw i drove by there the other day and i saw that they were closing their doors too Hey, that's exactly what I was thinking. It was like, wait, you were the salvation and now the salvation is closing as well. Yeah, it is challenging. And I don't know if you heard or not about the woman who had been in, um, in Detroit who had been evicted by the police, but her landlord had, um, was sexually harassing her and asking for sexual favors mm-hmm. and the police evicted her and now have said that they did that Um, and it was not protocol and it was, um, they've apologized for it essentially, Mm -hmm. right? So she has been on several interviews and it turns out that we had given her furniture during that lockdown time, but had not gone into her home, had dropped it off curbside. And so now she's gotten a new place and we've offered to furnish her new place and give her the whole complement of our services with the, de- the decorating. So that's going to be next Wednesday and we're very excited to refurnish her place. Um, it's, you know, my daughter said to me the other day, these landlords, sometimes they do these things that are illegal and 
they're illegal, but unless somebody prosecutes them, they get away with it. So that happens over and over. Oh, I, I cover my share of nightmare stories uh, involving landlords in the city of Detroit, especially. Lisa Crawford with us. She's the communications manager with Humboldt Design. So great having you on the show. I know it's the first time I think I, I received an email from your organization and I was like, we haven't had them yet. Uh, so it's been great talking to you. Quickly before we let you go, how can people find out more information about Humboldt Design? You can go to our website, humbledesign.org. And then you can click on the city, Detroit, that you're interested in or any city you're interested in. Or you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram. We upload happy videos and inspiring stories um, every week. Inspiring stories. We all need those right now to lift us up. So thank you again for being with us. And thank you uh, to your team for sticking out, but also doing so many good things for so many people here in our Metro Detroit community. It truly is our pleasure.